Um, but let's get into it a little bit more together then. So I quite like this definition um, that got shared um, about that um, burnout is institutional stress left unmanaged. And the two things that I think I really liked about this were the idea that, I haven't got my pen very prepared, that the idea that it is institutional. So um, the thing that I thought Jen was really um, focused on was this, this isn't Helen Tupper is not good at coping with her work. This isn't, you know, um, Sarah Ellis is rubbish at, you know, scheduling her time. It's not that. This is the sort of the osmosis of organizational issues <laughs> like it is what's going on in the business that impacts us rather than you've got a problem with managing your work so I, I quite like that point that it's a, the, an organizational thing to solve and um, which she talked about like upstream and downstream solutions so a lot of the solutions on burnout today actually focus on sort of downstream so they're all about the individual but when you think about the definition actually part of the problems are institutional so, you know, like it's sort of she talks about, you know, go do some yoga, Helen, go meditate. Well, actually, it's not individual stress left unmanaged. It's institutional stress, which we are absorbing. And so you've got to work upstream to solve the institutional problems, not just support someone individually. Now, of course, we do want to give people individual support, but that that is sort of a sticking plaster solution if you don't work at the kind of the core of the problem, which I thought was interesting. And it's this idea that it's sort of left unmanaged. So, yes, we might all have a hard day or a hard week but actually that's where sort of resilience kicks in to get you through the tough times and um, you might know that with resilience we really like Adam Grant's definition that it's your speed and strength of uh, the response to adversity so actually we can all go through moments of adversity and if we've got a, a, a level of resilience reserves we're able to navigate through that but it's when that adversity is unmanaged that it continues beyond uh, a comfortable period of time that it that it can lead to burnout so I quite like this definition you know it's, it's sort of for me it's four words that actually are full of meaning and I, I love it when like you can get so much within packed into stuff so useful definition to talk about um three things that contribute towards burnout um I've given them a bit of alliteration because that is how my mind works but it's based on Jen's work um so the first one was all about this de energy depletion so feeling like again that hard week has become a hard month which has now become a very hard six, six months and that the energy is just going down and down and down and, and you're not able to kind of recover that energy so depletion of energy reserves is one of the things that contributes to burnout the second is a sense of disconnection so um, that you feel like you've lost an emotional connection to your work you basically have become a bit robotic and it was interesting when I was sort of listening and reflecting a little bit I there was one point in my career where I call myself a robot like I definitely went into robot mode I was like must work must achieve must get up in the morning and do more work and achieve like um and I was I reflected and I was like oh that's because I became quite disconnected from the emotion of my job um and I and I became the you know the whole like human doing versus human being. I think that's that's what this point here is getting at. Um, and then the third one was defeatism. So she actually terms this like being quite cynical about your work. Basically, it's when you're in the situation, you can't see your way out of it. It's sort of, you've got stuck in that pessimism trap and you might become a bit of a victim of your circumstances. It's like, you know, it feels too hard to overcome and you don't think it's possible to do anything different it's it's that sort of mindset you you've lost any attachment towards optimism and you feel very very stuck in your situation so i wanted to get a bit of a sense and i'm going to make this da -da -da -da, i'm going to make this anonymous now and um, i wanted to get a bit of a sense of what if any of these things are you feeling right now so are you feeling like depleted energy are you maybe feeling a bit disconnected from your work you maybe got that sort of human doing type thing rather than the human being or are you feeling just a bit stuck in a situation you can't see your way out of it this is anonymous brilliant on the stars everyone's there for anybody that's new the way that we do this is we put stars on the screen you can find that at the top of your Zoom screen. So it's view options, which you should see at the top of your Zoom screen, and then annotate, stamp, and then star. Lucy from the team has put that in chat so you can see it, but it's view options, annotate, stamp, and star. And if you could just, you can put as many stars as you want on. Well, max at three because the three categories so don't go too crazy uh, but um, which of these things right now are you sort of feeling a little bit of a sense of? Um, let us have a little bit of a look. OK, so I would say the winner or the loser. Um, I actually thought it was going to be a clear one on energy depletion, actually. But I think it's very honest that a lot of people have said defeatism, because I think that 
that's quite hard to admit. I, I think to be, to be like, I'm feeling really stuck in a situation. I'm, I, I, I can see myself becoming a bit cynical about this and potentially, you know, falling into that pessimism trap. I think that, that takes quite a lot to say that. So well done for it being vulnerable doing it. Um, but it seems that maybe disconnection is the smallest of the issues in front of us with burnout. Um, all three, all three. Okay, um, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, um, Impressed is the wrong word, but I really like that people feel safe enough to talk about this in chat. When I suffered from serious burnout, it was a defeatism that got to me. Yeah, it's I wonder whether, I, I mean, I don't know, I don't know enough about this, but I wonder whether you start with one of these things. So maybe you start to get a bit tired, then you kind of just go, I've just got to get through it. And then maybe it's the combination of those things that mean that you feel like you're getting stuck in a situation. I don't, I haven't seen that research, but I do wonder whether that, 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 is a is a relationship between these things and if if that was true then i guess this would be the sort of thing that you this is your signal right if that if that if you do recognize that relationship then it's as soon as our energy reserves start to get depleted that we kind of have the the first flag and then when you recognize that you're going i've just got to get through it then that's like the second bigger flag and and you're trying to maybe catch the flags before it becomes something that feels very hard for you interesting interesting see we get to these insights together that is why i love this community and um, okay so six things i'm just going to remove your i'm just going to remove your uh stars and uh and arrows today we've gone with arrows <laughs> that's all good um and i just want to talk about the six factors that contribute to so you've got these kind of six things that it kind of feels like and there are these um oh actually no one more thing i wanted to do before that and um, there was part of the conversation was about burnout pre and post pandemic. And so um, I wanted to get a bit of a sense of if burnout is kind of um, institutional stress less unmanaged, um, if that's our definition, do you think for you, your sense of burnout is, I know the word post, I'm not sure we officially are post pandemic, but like just, just go with it for now. Um, I think we're still in some form of it, but just go with pre and post as some sort of definitions of where we're at. Do you think your, your kind of burnout for you was worse before the pandemic or like this period of time that we're in now, post slash now? Give me a bit of a sense with the stars of of how you're feeling the the research on this says for most people it's worse now um but i'm you know i think we should just test that assumption with um with what we've got as a community um, and the reason that it is um shown to be worse right now is because of those blurred boundaries because days have got longer um because we're spending more time at work um they are some of the factors that are contributing to an increased sense of burnout at work and bison's question is new in the company okay um if we look at burnout at our work level, I won't get to that point for the life areas. It's about balance. Okay. Um, so it probably, I wouldn't say far, like there's a massive trend here. So for some people it was worth pre, for some people it was worth post. Um, perhaps it's it's less about a point in time and more about the place that you work, maybe. Um, so if you're working somewhere different pre-pandemic, maybe it was the environment you were working in rather than you know the, the time that we are in now. Um yeah, Janelle, there are some issues pre-pandemic and these have just got worse since. That's very much what Jen says on the podcast, that um, burnout is not a new phenomenon. Like I think it was first started to talk about in the 1970s. Um, and it was definitely something like I think we covered it on the podcast pre-pandemic. Um, but there are some factors that contribute to burnout, which we'll come on to now, which have um, been accelerated by the pandemic. I think that's that's the point, really. Um, so these factors then which contribute to, to burnout, there are six that Jennifer talks about in um, an article that I will get you the link for. Uh, it's called Beyond Burnout. It's a really good uh, Harvard Business Review article, which got quite a lot of detail. And these are the six factors which contribute towards burnout in terms of like day to day work. So I'm just going to go through them relatively quickly and then we'll use stars again to see which of these do you like maybe, you know, recognize in your work. So the first one is um, a sense of overwhelm. So you are more likely to feel a level of burnout if you feel overwhelmed by the amount of work that you have to do. Um, so that's the first one. The second is the way you feel like you have got, oh, I need to write that in white, um, no control over your work, limited to no control. You feel like you can't like manage your time in the way that you want to manage your workload that like you're you know everyone's got shifting priorities like it's other people's to-do lists that are taking over your day and, and that kind of a thing the third one is that um you have a limited level of reward um and that that doesn't feel in line with your effort so it's not just i'm not being rewarded it is 
I'm putting all this work in, I'm achieving all of these things for you, and that is not being rewarded or recognized. Like that reward doesn't have to be monetary. It could just be someone saying, I appreciate you're working really hard right now. Um, and you know, I, I really value that. Thank you. It could it could just be that. So it's that like limited reward or recognition. But if you haven't got that, it can feel like you're just working and working without without you know without that recognition for that effort. Um, the fourth one is having kind of no support. So feeling like you are, you know, you're doing this all alone. You're you're working, but you haven't got a community around you. Um, you haven't got people that are picking you up. You haven't got people that are listening to you along the way. So just feeling like you're kind of going through this on your own contributes a lot to burnout, that feeling of isolation. A lack of fairness. So when it all feels a bit unfair, maybe you feel like, you're the person in the team that is always always picking up the problems or you're the person in the team who's the only one who feels like they're showing up or getting it done um, and it just feels like work is being sort of unfairly distributed or um, you know even that reward isn't 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 fair uh, but that feeling of unfairness can really um, get into there you get into quite a lot of motivational theory I don't know if any of you have done anything on um, Douglas McKelland or Cleland uh, you get into a lot of like uh, equity theory is quite an important part of motivation so if you feel like it's unfair and um, that's not really good um, and then last but not least is a bit of a mismatch particularly between your values and your strengths and the organization so it contributes to burnout where your values are what makes you you um, your strengths are the things that energy because your energy that you want to be known for and if it feels like you know what makes you you is not is not you know valued by that organization or the things that you want to be known for or what not what that organization needs that can just feel really really hard to manage so these are the according to the the research that jennifer moss has looked at these are the six factors which will contribute to you feeling some sense of burnout um and again i just wanted to get um i'm just going to clear your stars just for a second so we've got a clean a clean slate and um, I wanted to get a little bit of a sense of in terms of you and your work right now are any of these factors present for you like do you feel you know which which ones feel most significant in terms of contributing to a potential feeling of burnout at the moment um let's just see because I, I what I've got is three uh ideas to kind of respond to feelings of burnout but it might be that if there's a big trend here, there's something more specific we need to share. Let's say, for example, if it's values mismatch, that's quite a specific action, if that's the thing. So it looks like, I would say the biggest one is uh, control and overwhelm. Interesting how un the unfairness one's coming up. I'd have to count the stars. Um, yeah, all of those, Anne-Marie, all of those. Um, yeah, it is, it is interesting. I'm just not seeing as a group. Maybe the mismatch point, the mismatch point, uh, the overwhelm, the control, maybe those ones. I might just put a little, a little star. It's, this is a sort of useful research for me because it just makes me think about what additional support we might need to give or where I could signpost any other uh, like podcasts or resources we might already have. I think these three are the main one, the overwhelm, the feeling like I haven't got the control that I need and the potential mismatch. Uh, Kat says the values mismatch one is really interesting. I've been there before. I was really ca cautious. Yeah. So there are, I mean, there are things that you can do there when you're looking. I've done it. Like when I remember going for my interviews at Virgin, there were some very specific questions I asked in order to assess whether this was going to be a good match for my values. And also because I think I made loads of assumptions about Virgin based on the stuff that I saw outside the company. And I wanted to test that before I made the move. What I am really, that, that's sort of like an easy thing to do is to give you a set of questions that help you explore your values when you're going for a new job. I think the harder thing to do or question to answer is what do you do if you're in an organization? You're not, you're not intending to leave right yet, uh, right now, right? Uh, but what do you do if you're in the organization and you sense there's a bit of a values mismatch? Like in that situation, I think that's 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 harder. Um, so I might I might just have a think about what we can what we can share to support people with that. Steve says, I found that the unfair thing is something that comes up in a conversation a lot. I think I could name people in four to five different teams that have said something to the effect of we end up doing all the rubbish jobs. Um, yeah, and I wonder whether when we hear that, that is just a bit of a signal for support. You know, so based on these factors, if you hear someone kind of saying, oh, I'm, all the, or I'm always the person that picks this stuff up, then it is a potentially a bit of a signal that that person is finding this unfair. And, you know, perception is reality. So that is how they're feeling about this situation. But that is one of the six flags of burnout. And so that that probably is just a moment to stop and support someone and say, OK, let's talk about it a little bit more. What's going on? What could what could I help with? Rather than just being like, yeah, it's all, isn't it rubbish? <laughs> like that, it's 
think maybe that is a flag to get curious about them to try and support them with their career. Um, okay, so what I have now are three different um, actions areas that you could focus on to respond to burnout in your work. And again, I've taken I've taken inspiration from Jen's work, but I've sort of framed it in an amazing an amazing if way i.e. there's some alliteration. <laughs> um, so the first one, there are three Ps, that's what's coming up. Uh, burnout beaters, I've called these. Uh, so number one, a sense of purpose. So what um, Jen shows in her work is that one of the ways that you can respond to burnout is if you increase that sense of connection with your work. So, you know, when we talked about that um, defeatism and disconnection and um, depletion, this one is responding to um, the disconnection. So if you can reconnect with your purpose, and, and the work that you do, you can potentially have sort of more of a why behind the work. Um, the easiest way I find to do this, I mean, there's a whole host of stuff on purpose and you know, you can get into a whole load of pressure in trying to find your purpose. We have covered it in You Coach You, so there's a whole chapter on it in You Coach You. Uh, we have a podcast episode on purpose that we did in January. So by all means, dive into that stuff. But one thing that I find particularly useful when I'm refocusing on my purpose is vision boards um, and I've said about this before and I know they're not for everybody but for me they really help me think about what do I want what feels meaningful how much did I say I got at the moment what do I need more of and it is as simple as I'm doing a new one at the moment actually I'm going on holiday next week and I'm sort of hoping that being in that headspace will help me just generate the new one for me um, and it just helps me not get distracted by all the stuff I'm trying to do and think a bit more about the why behind my work but work in, in the context of my life as well so my vision boards I don't just think about what do I want work to look like the sort of images that I collect are work and life because for me they fit they fit together um and have you know be having your best friend as your business partner also means that there's a very there's a very close connection between my work and my life and so the way that I do this is I go through like I've, I've been collecting images now for about probably about a month I just rip things out put them all in a folder I have the folder at home I rip out pictures I rip out words I don't think about it too much I put them together and then I sort of get a bit of a, I guess a bit of a career collage um and um and then I sort of work out what what this is saying to me what have I got today what might I want to do differently so this is what I did a while ago and I never I never managed to fill this gap I was like really which really annoyed me <laughs> I was like I haven't found the thing to fill the gap uh but so I'm creating a new one instead but I think it's just um just finding those things that feel meaningful and purposeful for you um and not you don't have to share this with anybody else like I share it with you in order to help you but these can be quite private things they're just to give you that sense of what do you want work to look like and feel like and what might you need to do differently as a result um the gap is the headspace maybe it is maybe it is but I don't like a gap right <laughs> maybe like you need the gap Helen we'll see uh, I'll, I'll maybe show you what the one that I do on holiday is um I like I said, I've got I've got all the images for it to me it looks very artistic yeah it's not supposed to look too artistic or maybe the gap maybe the gap um if you don't like ripping up magazines maybe like, like there's a bit of you that's like oh that feels horrible uh, you can do this on um you know something like Pinterest or you could just google images but the reason I like magazines is because I'm not searching for something Thing. you know on Pinterest I feel like I'd have to put something in like uh energy impact and I'd have to I'd all I the reason I like images is because I don't go looking for anything all I do is flick over pages and collect something that just like I'm like oh that that and then it's not until I put it all together that I work out what it's saying so that's why I prefer to the image the image things um, second P then is around prioritizing. So the first one's around purpose. Prioritizing means we've got to make some choices. If you know, if you think about those those issues that our energy is depleted, that one of those those factors that contribute to burnout is overwhelm. Um, we've got to we've got to prioritize things. And there are a few ideas here that might help you. I really like the if then. So let's say if you ask me to do something, um, I will say, okay, sounds really interesting. If I pick that up, then what are we going to move back? And it's just having this like if then mantra within um, within the way that you work can be really helpful to force a prioritization. The second thing for me, like and I have I have achievement as one of my values. This is why it works for me. But if I'm trying to prioritize and I feel like I'm getting sort of distracted, having like one weekly win doesn't have to be a massive thing. It can be finally send that proposal to a client who's been waiting for it for longer than they should uh, I've had one weekly win I can see Lucy and she knows exactly what I'm talking about the one it's because Lucy helped me with it that's why thanks Lucy but um the one weekly win so that for me 
just helps me to feel like I'm making progress and I'm not getting lost in all the noise. So maybe maybe that helps you just one weekly win. Um, how do you celebrate your weekly win? Well, we actually have a win of the week. So we do it as a team as well. Um, so I start my week with like a one weekly win in mind, but then we celebrate our weekly wins. We use Microsoft Teams um, within, uh, within our business. And every Friday, someone puts a, a weekly win. That can be personal or professional. It doesn't, doesn't matter. It just gives us a moment to, to pause on, on what we've done. Uh, I, it's one of the best things. I love it. I absolutely love it reading them. Um, and the last thing was like, have some kind of like meeting manifesto. So Jen talks quite a lot about, you know, we talked about the time theft stuff. Um, she talks a lot about like having, taking control of the meetings. And when I was reading, I was like well, having some kind of meeting manifesto, which might be, we don't have meetings on a Friday or we only have meetings in the morning or uh, we end a meeting when the meeting ends, as in when the clock ends, we end it. So and we, we we call out time left to avoid time theft. Like what could there be some principles in your team where you have a bit of a meeting manifesto? Because I think meetings are one of the things that really like adds to this issue that like the amount of meetings the 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 fact that you're dragged into meetings that you might not need to be in all that kind of stuff so um might might be interesting yeah daria i've heard that as well the to done and, and the um the the, the to done list as well as a to-do list so that you can see see your achievements uh last but not least our third and final p is peers uh, this is the idea of the community point so um you know if you're feeling disconnected from your work um uh, having people that you connect with can help an awful lot um also uh, the point of having a lack of support that was one of the, the six factors we talked about so it's just worth thinking about uh, communities that you build around your career because that can specifically help you to kind of um, put a barrier up to burnout so there might be professional communities so you know I most professions have some kind of community around them so within we've like created lead learn connect which is a community of different people that we we work with uh, so that's a, a community that helps me feel connected to something a bit bigger than what we do on a day-to-day -day basis uh, when I was in marketing I was part of loads of different communities the marketing society marketing academy and um, I'm still part of those communities now because I find um, I find them so supportive, even though I feel a bit of a I feel a bit of an imposter. Like I don't do marketing anymore. Can I still come? Uh, and they still let me. Uh, so yeah, professional communities. Um, second, well, also I think by the way, think about what you can give, just not not just what you can gain. So to that point on marketing communities, I still give a lot to them. I get a lot from them in terms of support and connection, but I give a lot to them still because I want to protect those relationships. So maybe think give and gain in the context of these. So personal, you know, this is like family and friends. I was just saying to Lucy uh, before this call started, I've gone on a mission. I've booked loads of stuff with my friends. I cannot wait. We're going to Bunga Bunga in London. I've booked other parties. I've gone on a right personal personal mission so to spend time with friends so like get some stuff booked everybody it can be just a walk in a park but this is this is this is this is not just a nice to do we need we need this um for uh to avoid burnout and then passions you know maybe i'm passionate about food like what are you passionate about what communities exist around your passion uh, if you can connect the community with your passion you can often find different people that might support you uh what bunga bunga oh it's look, it looks good steve it's like pizza dancing and it ends with karaoke i mean i'm there i'm there i might be drunk uh but i'm there uh, it looks a lot of fun so they are our three things to beat burnout, purpose, prioritizing and peers. So hopefully you've picked up a few different ideas along the way. Um, and the last thing that I would say is there is a really good link. I'm going to get this to you just before we go. There's a really good link to uh, da, 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 da. I'm get this from hopefully the wonders of uh, Apple I mean that I can just copy from my phone and stick into chat. No, <laughs> that hasn't worked. That is a link to a podcast on, on parenting, which someone asked me for yesterday. Let me try one more time. Oh, there you go. It works. Um, so that is a really good article. And from that article, you can link to these things here that I think might be useful for you. One is a weekly newsletter on beating team burnout, which will share, share like um, updates every week. And that's quite good if you kind of have some kind of responsibility for a team. There's another one, a link to Ascend, which is a set of resources all about sort of uh, the wider world of work, I would say, to, to sort of looking after yourself at work, which might might be useful, all free. And they're all on Harvard Business Review. There are there are sources outside of Harvard Business Review. We are not sponsored by them, but you will you will tend to find that um, there is some there is some good stuff there. Um, so I am going to leave it there this week. I hope it's been helpful. 